so I ended up with two renders, one with 3D rendered motion blur and the other without. Even at uh, 1080p, it took 28 days to render this with Maya Arnold. I ended up having to share render passes between both renders to cut back on the render time. I split the AOVs into six render passes. I also split the render layers to isolate the beauty passes, background, lighting, and shadow information. The shadow and the backlight are being shared by the two different renders. And I changed the backlight in After Effects to match their respective settings. I just wanted to go with something simple. I didn't actually want to replicate uh, the lighting information in both of the background graphics that I used. So it's just a simple backlight, area light that was scaled up so big. Uh, it's all the way up here, it's shooting out of the image. And it gives me a simple rim light I can use in After Effects. The one that relies on motion blur produce some horrible noise in the specular pass. One solution I used to deal with the noise, because I didn't want to go back and increase samples, was to use a camera lens blur, specifically on the specular pass. I started with a detail preservation effect, which did a good job reducing noise on the skin. But with the specular, that detail preserve node wasn't doing its best to get rid of this really messy noise. So I used a camera lens blur at a very low value just to soften it a little bit. The two backgrounds used are from freepick.com. The first one is from Vector Corp. It's this really nice sunset. I went into Photoshop and trimmed off this bottom half. And because it, it wasn't large enough, as my camera started zooming out to capture the performance. I was reaching the ends of the image. So I used content aware fill in Photoshop to produce additional pixel data on the lips, sorry, on the, on the edges or the lips of the image, right? And then did some additional painting to ensure that I fixed the mistakes that were produced from content aware fill. The second one was a little bit more difficult to uh, expand. And the second one is a cyberpunk city and it's really cool but from where I had to position the character I definitely didn't have enough space to accommodate the camera's translation backward so I did a little bit more than content aware fill I did some photo bashing to end up with this finished result a lot of cutting and uh, reshading of buildings and doing some additional extensions just to produce something it was not what, what I didn't intend for it to be perfect I, I just wanted some really quick photo bashing results to extend the distance from the starting point to wherever the shot ended up at this rig is too resource intensive there are a lot of expensive dependencies and it's causing a lot of crashing. So I'm going to make it more lightweight. One of the solutions I'm working towards is to swap out the clothing rig for an end cloth workflow. The end cloth workflow will allow me to simulate the clothing after animation is done. It will also allow me to share the clothing across different characters very easily. I'm going to create a tutorial to showcase the entire process of converting this uh, clothing rig to an end cloth solution. So I'll do it on the shorts first, see how it looks, make sure it works perfectly. And then I'll do a full tutorial on how to get it done for the jacket. YouTuber, Dr. Jason Kennedy suggested a really cool idea that I wanted to try out. So Jason says, watching this version gave me an idea. The part where she sticks out her tongue and blows her cheeks made me feel like that slow motion section may be even more effective with her blowing and popping some gum. I thought that was a great idea. As soon as he said that, I was like, I have to try this. 
so I took a shot at it and I just used a simple sphere to test it out it looks pretty cool I didn't have enough animation frames to actually execute the idea the way he had described so I just took the finished result uh, the little play blast test into After Effects and slow down a portion the portion where she's blowing the gum and it looks like a really cool idea it looks like something that would have really worked uh, on the initial animation thanks Jason for the suggestion I just had to try it and I told you when I try it I'll credit you in the description Starting early next year, I'm going to be working on three big tutorials for my YouTube page. The first one is going to be a food modeling tutorial because everybody is requesting uh, for some more food modeling, but uh, not just time lapses, full tutorials. So I'm going to create a tutorial on how to create this super uh, juicy cheeseburger. I'm going to do it from scratch, start in ZBrush take it to Photoshop and After Effects and eventually render it in Maya. I'm going to be using a PBR workflow so you should be able to assemble it in your 3D package of choice or even in one of the engines, Unity or Unreal. The second big tutorial I'm going to be working on is a dance mix sequence. It's going to be about a little over a minute and I'm going to stitch together a whole bunch of dance uh, sequences from various genres into one final rendered animation. I'm going to talk about the planning process. I will take you through my animatic, animatic development process. That's the boarding process I use to visualize how it's all going to look like. For this particular project, I'm actually going to construct a background, a backplate. So the character is going to be dancing on a background that I model and texture. We're going to go through all that. I'll take you to the very end where I'll render the finished result with some cool VFX. I will be using the streamlined Kiwa rig that I use for the breakdown sequence. So I'm going to clean up the rig and then I'm going to start this project with that. The third project I'm going to be working on next year is a full character development tutorial. I'm going to start from the concepting phase all the way to the rigging phase and this time for this character I'm going to be grooming it. It's going to be an anthro leopard character. I'm going to show the, the studying of the reference and what I'm thinking about from concepting all the way to rigging and grooming.